We're now ready to begin discussing the the psukim aleph through hey in Parakid Bays. We've learned the translation, we've learned all the words, and now we can begin to analyze the psukim for meaning. We have been introduced to the family of Terach. His father was Nachor, he had three sons, Avram, Nachor, and Haran. Avram was married to Sarai, Nachor is married to Noka. We have learned that Haran had already died in Or Kasdim, and Terach had just taken Avram and Sarai and Lot to leave to go to the lands of Canaan. On their way, they stop off in Haran. This brings us to our current Pesukim. Vayomer Hashem al Avram, and Hashem said to Avram, Lech lecha, lech lecha, go for yourself. Me artzacha, me moraditcha, umi besavicha, from your land and from your birthplace and from the house of your father, el ha'aret asher ereka, to the land that I will show you. There are a number of questions. We're going to take each of the phrases that are highlighted in different colors and ask questions about those phrases. So the first question that we always ask, which is on the top of the screen, is who, what, where, when, why, and how. We're always going to need to ask, what does this unit mean? Who is it talking about? When did it happen? Where did it happen? And why did it happen? The basic questions that a reporter can ask will give us an explanation and understanding that transcends just looking at grammatical cues in the text. So, Vayomer Hashem al Avram, Hashem said to Avram, we have to ask, is this the normal pattern for the way that Hashem appears to man? Lach lecha, go for you. Are there any questions that you would have? Lech lecha, go for you. What would be a different way that this could be expressed? It should be expressed, go. So why are there extra words? Finally, the next three words, me'artzacha, from your land, umemladetcha, umebesavicha, and from your birthplace, and from the house of your father. Each one of these words are obviously different. It's not repeating the same concept in the same words. It's repeating a similar concept in similar words. This is giving it, it the phrases are parallel, and it's also a dramatic, a dramatic tone building parallel language, one word on top of the other, slightly different meaning. So why is it this phrase is being expressed in a dramatic and parallel way? The last phrase, Ela aret asher ar eka, to the land that I will show you. This text is unclear. The information is not being in which land, to the land. The, the land has not yet been mentioned. So which land and how come Hashem is not showing it to Avram Avinu? These are going to be the questions that we're going to ask on this text. text. Now the reason that the, this Pasuk, it's one Pasuk, and as you can see, there are five different questions, who, what, when, when, where, why, and how, which are really six questions, but there are the concept. Why, what is this concept of Hashem talking to Avram? Then comes the next few questions are really dissecting the words of the Pasuk. And there is a lot of explanation. The Mepharshim really, really go to town with these expl- the, with these words. So why is this? We have to understand that this is our first introduction to Avram Avinu. Avram Avinu is becoming the father of our nation when there's a very cute phrase that how odd of God to choose the Jews, not strange, not odd, the Jews chose God. Here is where Avram Avinu is choosing God. Actually, the, uh, Hashem is choosing the Jews because Avram has already chosen God. So we have to understand Avram. This is the first time there's communication between Hashem and Avram. It's a very significant part, point in Jewish history. Therefore, there's going to be a lot of discussion and a lot is embedded in the text. So first let's look at, is this a normal pattern? By Yomer Hashem al Avram. And Hashem said to Avram, Hashem says to Avram, go for yourself, leave your land. So then Avram gets up and he goes, and he goes to Shechem, Baknani, Azbaris, and there are Canaanites living in the land. In Pasuk Zion, we see a more regular way that Hashem appears to man. Vayera Hashem el Avram. Hashem appeared to Avram. Vayomer, and he said, I will give to, the, to your children, I will give this land. So here in Pasuk Aleph, we see that Avram, Hashem just speaks to Avram. In Pasuk Zion, Hashem appears to Avram and then speaks to him. What this teaches us is that Avram is a different model than all the rest of the Jewish prophets that follow him. All of the rest of the Jewish prophets are relying 
on the on the faith that Avram instilled in them that there is a single God. Avram had nobody to rely on except himself in this in this regard. He discovered Hashem. He analyzed the world through his mind rather than his motions and came to the conclusion that there was a God. He searched for God. He believed in God. So Hashem was still testing to see, are you the person who I think that you are going to be? Are you worthy to be the father of a nation of prophets? Hashem came to Avram and spoke to him and told him a very radical command. You have to break off from your entire past. You have to leave your father's home. This is giving Avram the opportunity to demonstrate his complete faith in Hashem. After this, this faith never needs to be demonstrated again. We all have it as part of our birthright from Avram Avinu. And so, for everybody in subsequent times, Vayera Hashem el Avram, Hashem appears to them and then speaks to them. So, Vayomer Hashem el Avram. Hashem says to Avram, Lech lecha, go for yourself, me'artzacha, Hashem says to Avram, go for yourself from your land, from your birthplace, and from the house of your father to the land that I will show you. When did Hashem say this command? When did Hashem say that Avram should leave his birthplace? We already know that Avram left or cast him at the end of Parshas Noach. In this Parsha, Hashem is once again telling Avram to leave to go to an unknown land. We know it's eventually going to be the land of Canaan. We know also that Avram has already begun his journey to the land of Canaan. So when did Hashem speak to Avram? And when Hashem says, leave your birthplace, where was Avram born? will be dependent on where he was. So where was he born How, and that he can leave it from right now? And where was he in general? So when did Hashem speak? There are two options. Option one is that he could be in or costume still. Avram has not yet left the land of Orkastim. Hashem comes to him and speaks to him and says, go for yourself, take yourself out of here, and go to a land that I'll show you. Terach, Avram, Sarai, and, and Lot leave Orkastim by the command of Hashem and go on their way to, to Eretz Canaan. And, and Terach takes a pit stop and he stops off in Haran and settles there. Option two is that Hashem speaks to Avram after the journey has already begun. Terach has left Orkazim. Ga and Avram have left Orkazim together. They've gone to Haran. They're on their way to Canaan. They stop in Haran, and that's where Hashem speaks to him and says, leave. These positions are represented by these three Rishonim. Rishonim are the commentaries who are from the early, from the early Middle Ages. The Rashi was, was born in 1040. Ibn Ezra was born in, in 1089, I believe, or around 1090. Actually, oh, no, sorry. Um, yeah, 1089, yes. And the Ramban was born after the Ibn Ezra's death, a few years um, after the Ibn Ezra's death in, in the 1200s. Just to correct myself, the Ramban was born in 1195. So Rashi is, was born first. The Ibn Ezra was 15 years old when Rashi died. And the Ramban was born after the Ibn Ezra's death, a few years afterwards. So they all are from the, the period of the, of the 11th and 12th century. Um, going into the Ramban was, lived primarily in the 13th century. So who are the Rishonim? So these are called the Rishonim. In order to explain this, we need to give an entire class on Jewish history. But let's just suffice it to say that in the development of the oral tradition in the Torah, in the oral Torah that accompanies and parallels the written text of the Torah, there have been different time periods in Jewish history. From the time of the giving of the Torah up until the time of, of the Mishnah, there was one such period where the oral Torah was transmitted via um, via oral tradition from one leader to another, and there were certain members of the society, 70 people and one, with one leader who were responsible for transmitting the Torah. When the exile became imminent, the, some of that oral tradition was written down in the Mishnah. When there was, when there was a further um, degradation of the oral tradition, when there was a less ability to, to transmit the, the oral tradition in person, so the Gemara was written down, which further outlines the the oral tradition that we had received from Moshe at Har Sinai. After the period of the Gemara, 
there became there was the period of the Geonim, which was followed by the period called the Rishonim. The Rishonim were the first. They followed the Geonic period, and this period comes between the years of a thousand to around fifteen hundred. And so there, the 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 after we are currently living in the period called the Achronim, after through the fifteen hundred, and each of these eras have their own personality, their own method of transmission. And so when it comes to Rishonim, there's a lot of reverence given to their to their writing. It's very terse writing and it's very there's a, a lot a tremendous amount of support in it that you have to be able to take out from the, the few amount of words that are being used to express a concept. So there's a lot of analysis that goes into understanding the Rishonim. So in this particular um, issue, there are going to be three Rishonim that are going to be having a debate. So let's look at the debate further. We've already said that Ibn Ezra, Rumban, and Rashi disagree about when did Hashem speak. Ibn Ezra says that Hashem spoke when Avram was in Kastim. The Rumban and Rashi say that Hashem spoke in Haran. But then the Pasuk tells us, Lech lecha me'artzecha umimladetcha umibesavicha. Go from your land and from your birthplace and from the house of your father. So we still have two lands that we need to figure out which one is Avram's birthplace. Option one is going to be in Orkastim. Option two is in Haran. And again, there are going to be a split of decisions amongst the Rishonim as to where Avram was born. The option one, Ibn Ezra and Rashi, both believe that Avram was born in Orkastim. The Ramban, in contrast, believes that Avram was born in Haran. So just to sum up in a nice table, where Hashem spoke, both Rashi and Ramban feel uh, Hashem spoke to Avram in Haran, whereas the Ibn Ezra feel that he was spoken or Kastim. Avram was born according to Rashi and Ramban in or Kastim, and the Ramban says he was born in Haran. So when Hashem spoke, we have the three options, either option one in or Kastim, in Haran, which is the birthplace, or in Haran, which is not his birthplace. And we have the three positions, Ibn Ezra, Ramban, and Rashi. Each of these positions are going to have pros and cons for the position. There are going to be those things that make the position stronger and those things that need to be resolved in order for that position to be understood completely. So the Ibn Ezra gives us the fact that when he says that Aram is still an or Kazdim, the benefit for this explanation is that it gives us a reason, a rationale for Avram and Terach for leaving Orkazim in the first place. Hashem gave it a command. They were going to Canaan. Hashem told them to leave to a land I will show you. Therefore, they're going into Canaan. Terach happens to stop off in the middle. Also, when Hashem says, leave from your birthplace, it doesn't. It, it makes more sense in the text, in the story, that Haran and Avram both have the same birthplace. We know that the, from the Pasuk that Haran's birthplace is Orkastim. So Avram's birthplace, by right, their brothers should also be in Orkastim. So the two of them, in this case, the, it, it allows for a, a flow in the Pesukim. What is the problem with the position of the Ibn Ezra? First of all, the Pesukim are out of order. According to the Pasuk, Avram has already left Orkastim. He's come to Haran. The Pasuk then tells us Terach dies. Now the Pasuk is going back and telling us Hashem had spoken to Avram before. This is out of order, so that needs to be resolved. Number two is Nahor, the issue of Nahor and Eliezer. Later in, the, in, in Parshas Chayesara, Avram tell, commands, Avraham commands his servant Eliezer to go to his brother Nahor's home to find a wife for his son Yitzchak. Avram's brother Avram hopes that his brother either has a daughter or a granddaughter who would be eligible to marry his son. So Avram wanted Yitzchak to marry his first cousin, who at the time was living in Haran. If Avram is from Orkastim and Haran is from Orkastim, how all of a sudden did Nahor move to Haran? We don't see in the Pasuk, in the Parak before, that Nahor is mentioned as having left any place or gone to any place. So how did he get to Orkazim? This also is an issue that needs to be resolved. And finally, the last Parak seems to place a primary, place a primary role on Terach as the one who took Avram and Sarai and Lot to leave from Orkazim to go to Haran. 
and to go to, to, to Eretz Knan and stop in Haran. If this was based on the command of Hashem, then it should have said, Vayikach Avram is Terach, that Avram took Terach rather than Terach taking Avram. The Ramban, in contrast, has a completely different opinion. He says that Hashem, that Avraham, that Terach chose to leave Haran because Avram was was having problems politically and his life was in danger. So Avram had this this uh, renegade son. He takes him and he leaves Orkastim to go to Canaan because that was outside Nimrod's empire. It was outside of the, anywhere where Nimrod could influence. It was had a different language and it was a different political area. We're going to see later that uh, according to Rashi, Nimrod is, is one of the the kings who come to try to fight and conquer part of Eretz Israel. So this, this, the land of Canaan is not within the jurisdiction of Nimrod. That's where Terach wants to go. However, because he has relatives in Haran, because Terach originally had lived in Haran, he came there. He realized he was safe, and he stopped. So, what is the benefit of this of this of this approach? First of all, the Pesukim are in order. It says Terach left, and then Hashem spoke. So the Pesukim is order. The other benefit is it explains how come Nachor is in Haran. The reason he's in Haran is he never left Haran. The detriment of this view, which is which, which could or could not be it could or could not be an issue, is that a lot is being read into the Pesukim. That there's an entire backstory that's not found, but which the Ramban understands from the context and implies from the from the order of the Pesukim and from how the as an explanation for how it is possible that Nahor lives in Haran, how is it possible that Haran is the birthplace? And in order, and that is that is that keeps everything makes sense. However, it does add details into the pasuk that's not there originally. Rashi's approach is that right now Avram is in Haran, but Haran is not Avram's birthplace. So how do we resolve this? So what are the what? How do we? Uh, what are the positives? I, I hate to use the word positives or negatives when it comes to the Rishonim, but I'm trying to uh, point out what are things that need to be resolved still in order to just understand this position. Where are the Mufarshim on these Rishonim going to discuss the issues in further? For Rashi, the Pesukim are in order. But we need to understand, there needs to be an explanation, how it could be that Avram has to leave his birthplace, leave from your birthplace if he's no longer in his birthplace. And so the explanation that Rashi gives is that it means that you need to further, you need to distance yourselves m- even more physically and more emotionally from that land. You have to travel farther from your birthplace. You have to travel, you have to really cut off all ties with your, your Moladvitzchah.